Hey, Wingnut. So, um, I was going to redo this video for you. Didn't have any audio in the last one, so I figured we'd try to get this done again for you real quick. Maybe it won't be quite as long either. So, I have your antenna file opened up here. This is the 300 foot horizontal delta. And just to take a quick look at it, this is kind of the orientation of it. And that's based on the notes that I gathered up uh, from over here. I'll slide this over. So this is your paper. Let me minimize that cam real quick or turn that off. So this is the orientation of your antenna. And some of the notes that I took in here was it's about 300 feet total. It's got three spans, so it's a triangle. Each span is about 100 feet. It has a horizontal orientation, and it's about 50 feet off the ground. So, you know, and then what we have here from you, from tree one to tree two, and then back to over here to the house. I did not add this fence line into the modeling because this is a wooden fence, so. I didn't feel that it was going to really affect it too much. So I didn't worry about putting it in the model. Uh, had it been chain link, you know, I, I would have likely added that in though, uh, something metal. So what I'm planning to do here real quick on the video is uh, to do some analysis some modeling on this. We're going to take a look at the 160 meter band, 80, 60, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, and six just for fun we're going to take a look at the maximum gain and i've already ran one of these ahead of time here this is in dbi or decibels based on a compared to an isotropic radiator which is a theoretical sphere basically meaning it uh, radiates equally in all directions you will see uh, some things here likely that are DBD, which is decibels compared to a dipole. And the difference between those two is 2.15 dBi. So basically what that means is that the dipole, which is a real world antenna, uh, has 2.15 dB more gain or DBi. 2.15 dB more. So if we want to know what it is in a, if we want to convert between the two, we can go from dBd and then just subtract about 2 dB roughly, 2.15 or 2, and that'll give you an idea, which is really kind of a real world number in my opinion. Uh, dBd is a little more accurate but as long as you're comparing everything apples to apples you know it really doesn't matter i don't think so all right so we're going to take a look at the max gain the low angle gain at about five degrees uh what i'm going to call the mid angle at about 45 degrees off the horizon and then invis so basically somewhere around 70 to 90 degrees roughly and that's either side of straight up in the air what a lot of people would call a cloud warmer now it's been my experience that invis uh for me you know it works well on these lower bands i don't know about 160 i just i don't typically run uh top band much so but uh definitely 40 so uh invis is basically going to be where you're going straight up you're bouncing off the ionosphere and you're coming back down. So all of your in-country 40 meter stuff during the daytime or at night even, right? Uh, but basically it's going to be up close and you can get some fantastic, fantastic uh, gain, I'll say, with an invis antenna. KB and I talked one time. Uh, 20 meters is a real struggle for us because we're about 330 miles apart, roughly. But um, one night we were able to hit 40, and it was just crystal clear. And it's because the antenna I was using, and I had a 
think I had my DX Commander running as well, and it, it worked well, which it's a quarter wave ground mounted vertical. But the doublet that I have, which is basically a dipole or an inverted V in my case right now, but it runs ladder line, uh, so balanced feeder, and a four to one. Uh, you know, it uh, it's set up for 160 meter uh, is what it's supposed to be able to do. And uh, it was killer. So anything really, so 20 meter, uh, I could not do invis. And I wasn't able to really find anything on this. I've heard some people mention it before that you can do invis uh, or near vertical incident sky wave propagation. Uh, which basically means shoot it into the cloud and bounce it back down. Uh, I wasn't able to get this to work on 20 and I couldn't find a lot of information on it. However, 40 definitely. So, so I thought we'd take a look at Invis as well as these others here and, and try to get an idea. Uh, we'll also pull up a picture of the model in 3d and uh just kind of rotate around it <clears throat> to kind of see what it looks like here so anyways there we go ahead and get started so this is kind of our orientation you've got your y-axis running vertical x-axis is left and right z is straight up which this is a horizontal so this is kind of what we see here and so if we slide over here to calculate and i figured we'd start around uh, I, I don't know that it matters too much here. These are about the same. So um, let's just do one nine. One nine. How's that? Uh, oh, also, we are 15 feet off of the ground, which is about 15 meters, roughly. So everything is going to be in meters in this application, which is M-M-A-N-A-G-A-L. I started using this uh, really because of... Uh, Calvin over at DX Commander. A lot of his videos, this is what he uses. Uh, one of his friends, John, uh, John Ginger, he's uh, down in Trimmer where he's at. He's in the U.S., but he uses this one as well. John's got some fantastic stuff. He's amazing, uh, the things that he's built. Control boxes with phased harnesses and everything else. Really, really, really cool stuff. So... What we'll take a look at here is, let's just start on this one. So we're at 1.9 <coughs> megahertz here. Like I said, these are about the same in this one. I've, I've ran this calculation previously. Oh, I'm running a real ground setup here with about, oh, five millisiemens per meter, which is about average ground in the U.S., roughly, um, if I remember right. So uh, it, it doesn't get much different it will a little bit truth be told what actually happens is it will lower uh the the far field plot closer to the ground whenever you improve the ground on this so if you're over seawater you know you're going to see a significant amount of gain at we'll say one degree five degrees off the horizon uh, but anyway we'll uh we'll go ahead and start here so we just ran a quick calculation here. Our gain, uh, our maximum DBI in this case. Let me get my little file open here. I'll slide this over so that I can kind of take some notes here. Maximum gain right now at 1.9 is uh, 5.94. And that is at 90 degrees elevation, which means it's going to be a cloud warmer. Right, so this is good for invis. So this is what you're looking at here. This is 90 degrees up on top, and then basically this is the ground right here at about 180 degrees. So uh, one of the things we're going to look at is the five degree here. So at 175 degrees, we are at neg. That's negative gain. Uh, so we are at negative. 13.94 at 45 degrees, <clears throat> excuse me, which is going to be, oh well now, let me think here, 45 uh, plus 90 will be 135, 
So, whoops, about uh, there. So we are at 1.8 dB. So that's that's pretty good. And invis uh, is about 70 degrees roughly. So we're at 90 here. So 20 degrees. This direction will be 110. About here to about here. Uh, 70, sorry, about here. So you're varying between about five degrees and six, we'll say. So we're just gonna kind of round that to say 5.5 roughly, okay? <clears throat> now let's take a look at the far field plot here. So we launched that and it runs over here on the other monitor that I've got set up. And this is what you're looking at here. So this is your antenna orientation again. You, know, you can kind of see it better here. This is upside down, but anyway, this is you're going to be your y axis going vertical, x axis left and right, and you've basically got a ball, right? Most of your gain, as you can tell in this pink area on top, is going to be straight up in the air. This is going to work very well for invis uh, or we'll say close operations, right? So this looks really well. Um, so we'll go ahead and close that one out. So that's basically what we've got for the 160 meter. Now, let's go ahead and slide over here. And we'll take a peek at our next one. So on my list here, we're planning to do 80. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We'll go up here to say, oh, about 3.5 or so. Uh, 3.5 is the beginning. It goes to 4, so we'll say 3.7. That's about halfway up the band, okay? So uh, let's take a peek at this one. Same thing. Start it. Pretty quick calculation here. Our peak gain in this case is 8.25. And that is also at 89 degrees. So we have another cloud warmer slash invis antenna, right? Uh, so this is going to be on 80. So our next one that we add in here is our low angle. So let's take a look at that. Low angle is about uh, 175 because 180 is at the horizon. So we are at negative 14.3. And then this was 135, I remember. So 135 would be 3.7. And then our invis uh, best gain is basically straight up. So we're at about eight. Then we swing this over about 20 degrees or so, so about 110, we'll say. So 7.5 and 7.3 and 8.2. So I don't know. I'm going to say average that out about 7.5, okay? Let's go ahead and do our far field plot and get this modeled up. And it looks mm, basically just like the last one, right? We're not going to see a lot of change here until we start going up closer to 40, 40 meters and 20. And what you're going to find is that these delta loops, uh, I have not ran one myself yet, but uh, they are supposed to be pretty quiet on receive. So not a lot of noise, uh, I guess, especially maybe on the horizontal you know, I, I, again, not ran one, but I plan to. Uh, the other thing is you get some really good gain. So if you have a big loop, which in this case is pretty good sized loop, you're going to start getting a lot of gain on higher bands. So when we get up around 20, you're maybe 30 even, you're going to start seeing some fingers develop on the gain of this thing. So... Uh, it's going to also be, you know, with that finger gain, we'll say, it's going to have some areas where there's nulls, right? But there's also going to be areas where it's uh, it's got, you know, 
quite a bit of gain. So that can be quite handy depending on what you're trying to do, right? Uh, most of your gain is going to be opposite of your fifth. Excuse me. I get a drink of water here real quick. Most of your gain is going to be opposite of your feed point. And based on the notes that I got from you, it looks like the feed point is intended to be. Oh, uh, so let's go ahead and finish this up here real quick. All right. So I've got all that in our notes here. So your feed point is going to be right here. This is where I set this up. So opposite of your feed point uh, is going to be most of your gain, which is going to be kind of in this area right here where the cursor's at. I don't know if you can see that, but um, you know, basically we'll say in the 10 o'clock position, 11 o'clock position. So, Okay, on to the next. So now we're going to go over to 60 meters, which is... Uh, channelized really it's about it's the only band that is as far as I know but uh, it's about 5.332 up to about 5.4 so let's say oh how about 5.35 that's about halfway so let's see what we got You'll also notice the calculations start to take a little more time here. Um, also, you're going to have some impedance matching that you're going to have to do with this. So definitely your four to one for sure. Uh, and then you're going to need to have a tuner. I would just try the touch up tuner basically that's in your radio existing uh, existing radio. If you got one uh, built into it, which I think you do. Um, I'm not sure which rig you're running. Seems like maybe it was the FTDX10. I'm I'm not 100% sure. So, but uh, definitely going to want a tuner for some of this to be able to keep your transmitter happy. So, our far field plot begins to shift slightly here. Oh, let's go back to calculate. So our peak gain right now is 6.22. So I'm going to add that to our list here. Low angle gain is going to be at five degrees. So let's flip over here. Five degrees is negative 9.2. Negative 9 point, oops, negative 9.2. And so the next one was 90 plus 45 is 135. So this is about 45 degrees. So we're at 5.7, 5.7. And invis is anywhere from straight up in the air to about 20 degrees on either side. So 20 degrees will be 110. So 5.5. .5. And you're starting to see some front to back separation here too, right? So you've got a range of about, well, we'll call it 3.3 three to, um, what was that? 5.5. Five. So let's call it, I don't know, 4.5 or so, something like that. Uh, somewhere around there, 4.5, sounds good. You're not gonna notice the difference, not much here. You really start to notice the difference when you start getting into about three dB of gain. Uh, that's where you're gonna start really noticing it. Anything three dB or more, three is gonna basically be, from my understanding, about a half of an S meter. Uh, most S meters are calibrated at 20, 20 meters or 14 megahertz. And if I recall correctly, it's about 6 dB roughly per S meter, um, something like that. So, all right. So that's what we've got on this one. We'll run our far field plot on 60. And you're going to start to see some difference here. So now you've got a weird looking apple. Uh, Here's your Y axis on top. This is your X axis. So looking at it from your house, right? And your gain right now is going out this way. So, you know, depending on which way this is facing, if this is straight north, uh, well, you've actually got some gain really kind of to the, what would that be? West, southwest, roughly, something like that. 
Uh, and you got some so a little bit of rejection over here on this east side. So, anyways, starting to see a little bit of difference here. So let's flip over here to the next one. So we're going to do 40 meters this time. And on 40, we've got a frequency range of between 7 and 7.3. So I'm going to do about, say, 7.2. So let's go, say, oh, 7. Well, I guess halfway would actually be 7.15. Um, I think you've got your general license, if I remember correctly, which general starts at 7.175. So... I mean, it's so close, it doesn't really matter. So let's just do um, right in the middle, 7.15. It's going to be pretty close. Uh, the only thing that's really going to change is your impedance. So that's where your tuner is going to come in, right? So anyways, our peak gain now is 6.47. And we'll flip over here to our far field plot at five degrees off the horizon. We've got negative right up here on top. If you're wondering, whoops, right there at the top is what I'm looking at here. Negative 9.8. So negative nine, oops, keep hitting them wrong, but negative 9.8, 45 degrees, which is about 135 is 5.3 dB again, 5.3. Invis, ah, okay, so we've got um, neg 4.3 here, and then if you swing over 20 degrees, roughly, which would be about 110, you're at 2.6 and <clears throat> 2.1. You know, you've actually got some more gain, just a little bit over, right? But um, just to be consistent with this, and that's why we're doing the 3D model as well. So we're at, oh, neg 2.6, and what was that over here? Neg 2.1. Uh, you got a null basically on top of a bit of a null. So straight up in the air. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know that that's... I'm going to start basically not really figuring that in and I'm going to look at the difference between, you know, 135 and 70, or I'm sorry, 110 over here and 70. So I'm going to say this is about, oh wait, is that neg two? It is neg two. I don't know. I'm just going to put say one. I don't know. Something like that. You be your own judge on that one. So, but here's our far field plot, and we begin to see a little bit more directivity here, right? And remember, opposite of our feed point, our feed point is right here. So, you know, that's uh, that's getting kind of opposite of our feed point a bit. So we're pointed. If this is north. You know, we are pointed basically kind of northwest, right? Uh, got some good rejection. Got a lobe over here, too, right? And that's headed to the, um, just about, what would that be, southwest or south-southwest, roughly? So, okay, on to the next. So now we are creeping our way up to 30 meters. So 30 meters is going to be around 10.1 to 10.15. So we're going to say, oh, oh that looks pretty good. 10.12, it's about halfway. So we'll hit start on our calculation. Our maximum gain now is 8.86. So 8.86. DBI, far field plot. Now she's starting to flatten out a little bit. So five degrees off the horizon. Uh, and the reason that I look at five degrees off the horizon, which in this case is negative 5.1, 
the reason I look at this is because most DX comes in at about three, two or three degrees off the horizon, uh, up to about, we'll say 10, maybe 12 degrees, something like that. So, you know, you're in basically kind of this, uh, this area from here up to about say here, this is going to be your long distance stuff, right? So, you know, kind of stretching the, uh, stretching the legs on your contacts there. So, all right, so we are straight up and down here. So let's go over to about 135 and we are at 0.4. So 45 degrees, we are at uh, 0.4. And the reason I'm not looking over here is because you're gonna find that your gain's gonna start heading this direction and this is gonna be your front to back separation. But, um, you know, I, I am going to include the modeling file here so you can rerun these calculations. Just download a copy of MMANA-GAL. And this is the free version that I'm running here. Uh, and it, it works fine for what I need. So, uh, all right, invis, 70 degrees. So it's about, say, 20 degrees that way. Neg 10.9 over to neg 11, I'm gonna call this neg 11. So neg 11. Far field plot in 3D shows, I don't know, a piece of cauliflower with a top knocked out of it maybe, I don't know. So a flat mushroom, uh, a divot, I don't know. Anyway, but this is what you kind of see here. This is going to be your feed point. And now you're starting to get this gain. So if you look here at the bottom, it's really kind of right over here on this flat spot. And so this is kind of what we're looking like. And you have some gain to the back as well, right? You're getting pretty good rejection on the sides though, here and here. So that's pretty good on 30 meters. You know, that's, that's looking pretty good. So got some pretty good stuff there. All right, now we're getting into some of the lower or higher bands, I should say, uh, 20 meters. So let's take a peek over here at our calculate. And so on 20 meters, we are 14 to 14.35. So 14.15 is pretty close, but uh, I'm gonna do 14.2, uh, just because. Something like that. Just a smidge over halfway, right? So 14.225 uh, is gonna be the start of your general class anyway. Um, Unless, of course, you're running FT8 or something, uh, stuff like that, digital uh, CW, that type of stuff. So, all right. <clears throat> Took a little longer to calculate, which means something interesting is probably happening. So our peak gain right now is 0.81. And let's see what else we have here on our far field plot. So negative five, we are at, or I'm sorry, five degrees off the horizon. We are at negative 6.4 dB at 135. We are almost in that null right there. So we are at neg 6.2. And invis neg four. Neg one, neg 1.6, and geez, all right, so neg four, neg four, neg one. So I'm going to call it, say, neg mm, 2.5. How's that? 2.5. Okay, now. You're starting to see negative gain here. 
and I'll explain that here in a second as well. But on our far field plot, this is whoops, make bigger. This is kind of what we've got going on here. You got some pretty good gain out in that direction. Now, you can look at that and say, well, that gain kind of sucks. You know, that's like neg six. Well, yeah, it's it's not going to be the best at 20. But a ground mount, a quarter wave ground mounted vertical is about neg four to neg six at five degrees off the horizon. And I have talked to uh, Australia on that. Uh, well, I, I hit Australia with FT8, I'll say, right? Um, and, you know, I've definitely, I've talked to some folks in Europe with that. So I'll show you the, I'll show you the calculations here in just a moment, okay? Uh, we'll go ahead and make it through this, and then we'll talk a little bit about power and ERP. So, okay, so we've got this guy. So, you know, some pretty good rejection. So if you've got some noise in one of these directions, maybe a, a nosy, I mean, noisy neighbor, um, you know, something like that, or if you're trying to get some rejection, you can kind of, you can get some of that on 20 here, okay? So let's take a peek at our next band, which is going to be 17 meters. So 17 meters runs between 18.068 and 18.168. So, and yes, I have a cheat sheet in front of me. So, mm, we'll say somewhere around that. Calculate. Now it's starting to crunch. Okay. 17, max gain, 4.31 dBi. Far field plot, 5 degrees off the horizon, neg 5.4. So negative 5.4, 135 degrees is basically flat. We'll write it down here, 0.1. So 0.1. And invis, I'm not even, you know, we'll note it, but uh, I don't think you're going to get any invis on 17. Um, You'd have to have some reflection off the ionosphere here. It depends on your muff, I think, probably. Or maximum usable frequency, possibly. I just, I don't know, I couldn't get any, I couldn't get any invis off 20, but anyway. We'll put it down here, uh, just to be consistent. So, we are at 70 degrees. So, 110 right here is neg 2.4. And over here. Neg 5, neg 2.4, negative 5, uh, what is that, 3, we minus 1, so we'll call it negative 3.5. Now, far field plot that thing, and this is what we're getting now, <coughs> and you're starting to see some some interesting shapes here right because you've got a null here right in this area here and then you've got some gain but you're really the, the I'll say what I think the functional gain is probably going to be is going to be these lower lobes here so this is kind of what you got right you got this uh, really good side rejection here and you know you've got some front to back and oops, flip this thing back over here. Uh, so yeah, you're starting to get some gain. Really, again, if you look, it's kind of in that area to the northwest or north-northwest. So, <clears throat> all right, on to the next. 
we're going to go to 15 meters. So 21 to 21.42. So we'll do 21.2. Crunch, 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 crunch. Okay. Far field plot. Oops. Got to pull this over here. 6.4 maximum gain. 6.34, uh, sorry. Five angle, five degrees off the horizon, which is going to be about here. So we're at neg five, neg five, and straight up in the air is neg ten, neg ten, neg fourteen. <coughs> I'll average that out and call that, uh, um, we'll call it neg 12, something like that. Uh, mid angle, so I may have forgot to look at that, 135 degrees. So 135 is gonna be about there, 1.3, 1.3. Far field plot. And now we've got some interesting shapes going on here. So now you're starting to see a, a lot more gain on this one lobe right here. I mean, as far as directivity goes, I should say. You know, your peak gain is actually right about in there as well. So, you know, uh, your peak gain is about 45 degrees off the horizon. So... Okay, on to the next. Now we are at 12 meters. 12 meters is 24.890 through 24.990. So 24.890 to 990. Mm, let's do say 940 how's that boom <coughs> crunch 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 yeah uh starts to starts to kind of squeeze a bit if you do it at uh, two meters it takes about a minute to run uh, 7.95 maximum gain far field plot at five degrees off the horizon negative 2.5 negative 2.5 at 135 you are just about in that null so we're going to call it flat basically we're just going to call it eh we're going to call it uh, say zero okay because I mean you do have some gain right here pretty good really 2.2 remember the conversion between dbi and dbd so to go to dbd or a dipole uh, this is basically about flat on a dipole. It's uh, minus 2.15. So, uh, yes, I mean, it's not bad in this case. Uh, so, straight up in the air, 3.7. And over here, 3.4. And 3. But uh, two, okay, so what was that again? Three? Oh, four, sorry. Four and what was that? Four and two and three. Hmm. I'm not sure what that would be. Four, seven, nine, K divided by two, four point five. I don't know. I'm just gonna call it say it was pretty hot, pointed straight up, so I'm going to go like 3.5 dB, roughly. 3.5. Far field plot. And we will slide this over. This is what this looks like. Now we've got some gain. Look at that. I mean, you've got a uh, pretty exciting wave there. So let's take a peek and see what's going on here. OK, 
Okay. All right. So there's your gain. You got some other stuff going on here. It's like a really bad day if it's a Lego and you step on it. So. But, all right. That takes care of our 12. Now we're going to go to 10. Calculate. So our 10 meter band is going to be 28 to 29 7. So 28 to 29 7. So we'll do say 28.5 roughly. Let that run for a minute. And maximum gain is 8.14. So maximum gain is 8.14. Low angle is going to be at 5 degrees. Negative 1.4. Negative 1.4. 135 degrees is right smack dab in that null. Right there. Okay. So, neg 11. But, that's why we're running the 3D plot and so you can see this for context. Because you're in a null, but right here, you know, you've got plus 5.6 dB. So, that's uh, like uh, four times your power. So, all right. Actually, four times here. You know, this is more than 10 times less your power. So, putting out a thousand watts, you're probably getting like, I mean, right here at this very angle, you're going to be at less than a hundred. So, but right here, if you're putting out a thousand watts, <clears throat> you're going to be putting out uh, double, be 2,000, uh, about 2,500 roughly, something like that. So, Invis, straight up in the air, neg 11.5, and <clears throat> neg 6, so we'll say neg 12 and neg 7, that's a difference of 5, neg 5, wow, okay, um, I don't think this really honestly matters too much here, but uh, uh, 10, uh, what is this going to be? 10, 73K, and 5, I don't know. We'll just, just say neg 7, something like that. Neg 7. All right, now let's go to 6 meters. Oh, sorry. Far field plot. I nearly forgot. And there you go. <clears throat> Again, this lobe becomes more pronounced, right? Uh, this is going to be your peak gain. So that's about 8.14 dB. So if you're putting a thousand watts out, you're going to be at, uh, what would that be, 2,000, 4,000, mm, probably somewhere around six or 7,000 right there on your ERP. Well, minus your coax loss and stuff. So, But yeah, this is what I was saying. You really start getting some fingers on this thing. Get a lot of nulls too, right? But... Man, that's a hot signal pointed that direction, right? And, um, you know, there's ways that a guy can change your feed point and steer this thing around, right? You could hook up a switch box and change your feed point from, say, here to maybe here to here. Because remember, it's going to go opposite of the feed point, you know, and move that gain around, right? So something that you can do there is pretty cool. Uh, so we've got that guy. Now, neg six, 
or I'm sorry, six meter. And six meter is going to be around, oh, let's see, what do I have here on my notes? I don't ever use six meter. Wait, I've got it right here. 50 to 54. So 52, we'll say. 50 to 54. So I'm going to do 52 megahertz. And start. And just about done. Peak gain is 12.55. 12.55 dB again. Far field plot is uh, 5 degrees off the horizon. Negative 1.7. Negative 1.7. 135 degrees is... Where's that at? Right there. Negative 1.9. Negative 1.9. I don't really see the point here, but uh, we'll do invis. Neg 7. Neg 10. So that'd be neg 11.5 or so. Yeah, we're just going to call it neg. Hmm. Neg seven, neg eight. I'll just write that down. Negative eight. Okay. This is going to get interesting. Far field plot. And here we go. Now we've got some interesting stuff going on here. These things are also very flat, right? So we are getting very directional here and some, I mean, I mean, but man, if you can, if you can get that pointed somewhere, I mean, you're over 10 times your power at this point. So, you know, a thousand Watts is effectively like 10,000 Watts, right? With the gain that you've got, you're over, actually it's more than that. You're at neg, uh, you're at 12.55. So uh, almost 13 so times 10 would be thousand be 10,000 so gee my knees um, I don't know 18,000 something like that maybe so anyway this is kind of what you're looking at you got a lot of directivity you got a lot of crazy fingers on there a lot of nulls um, but um, but you know this is this is functional, right? In some ways. Um, so this is what we're looking at on the antenna modeling. Now, I told you we'd go take a look here for, at uh, some gain here. So this is effective radiated power. Just to give you an idea. So let's say you're putting out. <clears throat> Mm, a kilowatt on 14 megahertz and you're running LMR 400 which is pretty good coax right um, you don't have a lot of loss until you get into these higher frequencies so uh, you know LMR 400 works quite well for a lot of things depending on how long you got to run that so the thing you get into is you'll have a lot more loss at say 50 you know, on six meters than you will on uh, 40 or, you know, even 20 for that matter. But, and I just kind of, kind of guessing here. So you got a hundred feet of coax. This is DB a D. So this is a dipole, right? So if you had a thousand watts on 14 megahertz with a hundred feet of LMR 400, 
your effective radiated power on your dipole is going to be eight, about 900, right? So now remember, I told you that the ground mounted vertical is between negative four and negative six. So we're going to do negative, we'll do both, negative six. 225, 226 watts. What if it was, you know, this is low angle, right? So this is five degrees off the horizon. 357 watts. Okay. So if you're able to get a few dB here, so for example, on your, your maximum gain on 40, uh, your low angle was neg 9.8, so not real great. Your invis was 1, so you got 1 dBi, which would be, uh, be like negative 1.15, I think. Seven, almost 700 watts, 6 to 90. Um, oh, sorry, that was at uh, 40 meters, so that's about 7.2. It's about 710 watts or so, right? Big difference here. Big difference. Uh, your max gain was at 45 degrees. Uh, so just to kind of give you an idea here. If you were able to get a hex beam, which I think is around, oh geez, what are those? I think they're around, I'm going to say three, but I might be wrong here. Let's see. Hex beam, antenna, gain. So they're saying uh, DBI is uh, five and six. So remember, DBD is basically to convert the two you take 2.15 away from that so let's say that it was um six so let's just say it's around four so around four okay you're over 2300 watts if you're running a three db roughly you're at 1800 now on 20 meters, 14.2, we'll say, with 3 dB a gain, uh, you're at 1,800 watts. So that's significant. Uh, and this is where you begin to get into, you know, directional antennas and whatnot. KB runs a hex beam on his, which he's running about a kilowatt uh, at about 14.2, roughly. Uh, you know, this is probably fairly close to what his setup is. And that's why he's so loud because effectively he's at about 1800 Watts on air or 2000. So there you go. Right. Um, you know, whereas if I'm running my, well, I, I don't even know what angle I would have to use to get to him from there. So this is a pretty handy little, you know, conversion deal. It's on antennas.ca, uh, and it's the Calculate ERP, Effective Radiated Power. And this takes into account your LMR 400. I'm running about uh, 7 8 Heliacs right now at 1,500 watts. And if I had, well, whatever that is, 3,600 if I was able to get 4 dB, if I'm running my vertical, which is about my best opportunity to try and get KB, uh, man, I don't know what that would be. It's not, it's not real great, probably, because uh, I just don't know what angle that would be to get to him. I can't bounce it off the ionosphere, so I'm basically restricted to ground wave propagation. So I'm probably at about negative three dB. 700 watts best case scenario probably worse than that honestly um you know 
negative four. So anyways, uh, you know, even with some, well, what, what to me is sizable coax, um, you know, I, I just cannot get there hardly. So this is where I'm looking at getting a, um, a Yagi antenna and the one that I'm really looking at right now is I think it's a high gain four element and it puts uh, on 20 meters I can get about 8.2 dBi so I'm going to say 6 dBd. So I go from 460 watts up to about 5,800, right? So big difference. Uh, he could hear me then, I think. So uh, I should be able to get just about anywhere I want. I'm actually running about 150 feet of it. So yeah, about 57, 5,700 or so. But um, yeah, anyways, uh, hopefully this helps. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show you real quick. Some of the information that I used to pull this up was off of the DX Commander website here. And what I did is he's got this video here where he's talking about, uh, you know, horizontal delta loops. And... Um, And he goes into a, a quite a good explanation here. He draws it out. It's a really good video. He's got a couple of them on Delta Loops, so just something to kind of keep in mind there. So I think that covers everything that I can think of. So hopefully that helps. And, uh, you know, like I said, if you got any questions, if it's something I can help with, uh, let me know. If not, then uh, we'll probably find somebody who can. So good luck and uh, Godspeed. Hopefully you get that antenna going. Catch you later.